everyone, this is Rishi from The Growing Home and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a chicken tractor just like this one that I'm sitting on. What's a chicken tractor? Well, a chicken tractor is basically a movable chicken coop. And the idea behind the chicken tractor is this. When chickens eat, they poop. And if you leave them in the same space constantly, like when in a regular chicken coop, then that poop will build up over time and you have to have some way of managing that poop. So most people will put straw or wood shavings into their chicken coop and collect the poop in that carbon rich material and then scoop it out from time to time. Also in a chicken coop, you have to constantly be supplying feed to the chickens. You have to constantly be giving them, you know, either bringing feed to them in the form of, of pellets or grains or be picking greens and bringing the greens to them. And the chicken tractor solves both of those problems. In the chicken tractor, the chickens poop in one area, and then in a day or two, you move them to a new spot. So the poop now is not collecting in the same spot. They poop here, and then you move them to here, and then they poop here, and you move them to here, and you poop, they poop here, and you just keep rotating them around and so their poop never builds up and you never have to scoop it out or, or have to manage it in that way. Also, in the chicken tractor, the, you move the chickens over their food. So here in our orchard at Sarbodeya Farms, in the, in the ground level of the orchard, we've planted a cover crop of oats, rye, daikon radish, field peas. These are all great plants for the soil but they're also great food for our chickens. And so what happens is we put the chickens in this spot, they eat the oats and the hay and the rye and the peas, and then the next day we move them to the next spot, and the next day we move them to the next spot. And by the end of our rotation, which is about in our farm is gonna be 30 days, the first spot that they were in when they come back to it, the food plants have regrown. And so we're constantly growing the food and moving the chickens onto the food. So we're never having to, we're having to feed them less chicken feed and we're not having to manage their manure. In fact, their manure is turning into a resource building up the health of our soil. So that's the basic idea behind a chicken tractor. So now let's take a look inside the chicken tractor. So inside the chicken tractor here, you can see the chickens, we just moved them on here about two hours ago and they've already started to eat down the plants. Look at that Swiss chard. The, the leaves were completely full and you can see they've already started to tear that up and they are just gonna, by the end of today, this, all the greenery in here will be completely demolished. They will have completely just eaten everything in here. They're also digging in the ground and eating any worms or bugs. They're a little bit small right now, so they don't have those powerful legs yet to scratch the ground. But once they're, uh, they're full-size chickens, then we'll really see them turning up that soil and digging in the ground for all the worms and everything. They have access to their water on a constant basis through our chicken nipples, which we'll show you how to install. And they also have a, uh, a feeder in the back that's supplementing them with organic feed. So that's the basic setup of the chicken tractor. Now I want to show you what the, what the area that they were in yesterday looks like today. So yesterday our chicken tractor was sitting in this area right here. And the morning before we put them onto this area, this spot looked like this spot behind me. It was full of these thick, lush rye grasses, oat grasses, daikon radish, and in one day, look at the destruction that they did. There is absolutely no green matter left on the ground. They completely ate everything up. They've fertilized this whole area with their, with their own poop, and, but they haven't really disturbed, they, haven't, they weren't able to dig the plants out of the ground. The root systems of those plants are still intact because the chickens can't really pull those plants out. So now this area is gonna have 30 days on our system to incorporate that manure and for those plants that were growing here to come back and to reach this luscious stage again. And when they reach this luscious stage again, 
that's when the chickens will be back on here and mowing that material down again. So you can see this is an extremely effective system. The chickens are getting very healthy, fresh pasture every day, and we're improving the health of our soil over time by constantly having this manure added to it. So now let's go ahead and start showing you how to build a chicken tractor. So we're gonna start out by building the frame and to build the frame, we're using two by three lumber. So we picked up these two by three redwood uh, lumber boards. They're 16 feet long each. And we're gonna be making um, all the cuts for the frame right now. So the cuts that we'll need, um, I'm gonna list in the description of this video and we're going to go ahead and start making those cuts right now. Alright, so we made all of our cuts here and I'm just going to go over them with you. We got four pieces that are at 94.5 inches, three pieces here that are at 45 inches, two pieces at 43 inches, two pieces at 19 inches, two pieces that are cut at a 43, uh, at a five degree angle with the long end at 43 and a half inches, and another two pieces, again cut at a five degree angle uh, with 37 and a half inches at the long side. So that's all the cuts you need for the frame of the tractor. So for the angle cuts, we're gonna cut the, uh, the lumber on two different ways for the long pieces and the short pieces. For the longer pieces, the 47 and a half inch, you're cutting the angle along the three inch side of the lumber. Okay, so if you're looking at it flat like that, it's going down this way. And for the shorter pieces, for the 37 and a half, you're cutting the angle along the short side, along the two inch side. So if we're looking at on the two inch side, your angle is going down like that. Both cuts at five degrees, just one face, one cut facing this direction, one cut facing the other direction. Okay, the tools that we'll need to actually put the frame together, you'll need a uh, cordless drill and a cordless impact driver, or screwdriver. It helps to have a full set of bits. We're mostly going to be using the 3 16th bit. And then we'll need two and a half inch screws and a few three inch screws. So now we're going to get started building the frame. Okay, so here's the layout of the bottom of the chicken tractor. We have the two 94 and a half inch pieces running down the sides and a 45 inch piece in the front here between the 94 and a half inch pieces. In the back, we have a four, the 43 inch piece and the two 37 and a half inch angled cut pieces. Those are gonna be the back um, legs, which will give us the beginning of the frame for the enclosure on the top. So we're gonna put that all together now. We're gonna screw that together. Now for this next joint here, I'm trying to connect this piece here through this 2x3. I only have a 2.5 inch screw. So the 2.5 inch screw will not reach through to this piece in the back. So what I'm going to do is I put a 3 8 inch bit onto my uh, drill. That's fatter than the head of my screw. And I'm going to drill a hole, a hole about halfway down this 2x3. So I'm going to start with that, trying, making sure I'm not going to um, run into the screws I already put in, which I just did, but I think I just missed it. And now I'm going to switch that out, this 3 8 inch it bit out to my 3 16 bit. And drill the hole all the way through so I can reach the next piece of wood. OK, 
Okay. And now I take my two and a half inch screw. Go for three. Oh, or a three inch screw. Let's do a three inch screw. I'm gonna take a three inch screw. And now I went all the way through and I connected with that piece in the back. All right, and now we're gonna do the second hole, which will make this a, we'll finish this joint. So again, switching back to the 3 8 inch bit. Make my pull here. And then switching out to the 3 16th bit. Make that hole all the way through. And then putting the screw, the three inch, the three inch screw to connect. And now that joint is done. So now the uh, bottom frame is finished and the next step that we'll be doing is we'll be adding the legs. So I have my, I have Russ and Corey here help me demonstrate to you what it looks like. The uh, 43 and a half inch legs that were cut at the five degree angle are gonna go in the middle of the frame. You're gonna line up the end of this piece um, using a measuring tape, measure from the, from the back to the end of this leg at, and it should be at 49 and a half inches. So we're gonna screw that in at 49 and a half inches on the inside of the frame. The two shorter legs, the 19 inch legs, we're gonna screw in on top of the frame with the uh, lumber parallel to the long side of the frame. on the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start building the top of the frame so we are grabbing our last two 94 and a half inch pieces and putting them on top of this front leg we're going to screw this into the middle leg and then we're going to screw uh, the back leg into this from the back before you uh, screw before you start screwing in you should measure from the bottom of the frame to the, uh, 21 and a half inches on the middle leg and the back leg. That's what you want to line up to when you're screwing these in. So from the bottom to here to this point should be 21 and a half inches. Okay, so now we have the, the long uh, sidebars up and we're going to put the last pieces for the uh, lower frame here. What you're going to use next are your 45 inch boards, your two 45 inch boards. One of them is going to go in the front here with the short side facing up. The next one is going to go in the middle with the long side facing up right in front of these legs and the third piece you're going to use is your 43 inch piece and your 43 inch piece is again going to go short side facing up in between these two legs so you want to make marks um, so that you're lining this up to the right height again this is being marked at 21 and a half inches so that when we screw it in it's all square and, and level so the major framework is now complete. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna frame the roof of the enclosed area where the chickens will be sleeping and the egg boxes will be. So to make the actual frame for the roof of the enclosure, we're gonna use two by two wood. Uh, this, is non, this is not redwood, this is just a cheaper two by two wood. Because this wood is gonna be enclosed with a roof, it's not gonna be exposed to the weather as much and so we don't need to pay extra to get the redwood. Alright so here I'm, I'm going to show you the, uh, the cuts you need for the 2x2 lumber. The first two you need are 
uh, 19 inch cuts at a five degree angle. Okay, so it's 19 inches on the long side and it's cut at a five degree angle. Then you need one piece which is 45 inches and a quarter. 45 inches and a quarter. That's just a regular 90 degree cut. Uh, another piece at 48 inches. Again, regular 90 degree cut. And two pieces at 49 inches, 90 degree cuts. So that's gonna be the framing for the roof here. And we're gonna start putting So you can see here we got the frame of the roof on now um, and we're going to put corrugate on top just like you saw in the, uh, the, chicken coupa, the chicken tractor I already showed you. The corrugate comes in two foot panels and it overlaps two inches. So we're going to put another reinforcing um, beam here on the roof. So I'm just going to hold this here and make a mark. And I'm going to cut this piece down to that mark so it fits right inside of this frame. So when you screw the uh, roof structure pieces on, you're going to screw them in just like we did here. You put the 19-inch um, piece, piece two by twos that are cut at the angle along this center support beam. And then you put the 48-inch piece across the top here in the middle, the two 49 inch pieces along the sides, and then a 45 inch piece in the back. And now you have a completely um, square frame to put the roof uh, panel onto. So now we're gonna start working on the wheel system, the wheel lift, and what we need to do is create a, a piece of a support system for the wheel lift that's I'm going to reinforce the corner of the frame where that wheel lift is attached. And so what we're going to use for that are um, two pieces of 2x6 lumber that we're cutting to 10 inches. Okay, so we've got the corner piece and we're applying some wood glue along, the ed along both edges. And we're going to glue this piece in right here. And I'm also going to screw it in um, from behind into that corner piece. And now we're going to flip this over and put some more screws in from the bottom. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make a hole into our brace piece here that, we'll, that we're going to put this half inch bolt through and this half inch bolt is going to connect the lift piece um, which the wheel will be connected to to the frame. Okay so what, I'm, what I did is I'm going to measure um, 8 inches from the back of, of my uh, brace and two inches from the bottom. I'm going to make a mark right here and now I'm going to make a half inch hole through the brace piece and the important thing at this point is to get this hole to be as straight through this piece as possible. You want to come in at, a, at as close to a 90 degree angle as you can. So it's a good idea to have someone watching your drill as you go down and make sure that you are holding your drill straight. Ok, 
Okay, so now we're going to prepare the uh, handles that are, we're going to attach the wheels actually to. And so these handles we cut to 36 inches long and we're going to make two holes in this. One hole is going to be where the wheel will be attached to this piece and the other hole will be where this leg attaches to the frame of the tractor. So we're going to make two marks. We're going to make the marks centered along the 2x4. This is the 2x4 we're using. One at 2 inches and one at 10 inches. And what we're going to do is drill two holes. So the first hole that we dig, uh, that we drill, which will be the hole that we attach the wheel with, needs to be the size of the hole in the wheel. So this wheel that we're using, we're using a 10 inch wheel, has a 5 8 inch hole in it, which we're going to use a 5 8 inch bolt for. So this first hole is going to be a 5 8 inch hole. Um, this second hole is going to be the same size as the hole that we just drilled in the frame, which is going to be a half inch hole. all together right now but I just want to show you how it works because we're gonna we have to put the caging on before we actually attach this you've got the half inch bolt coming through the brace piece here and the 5 8 inch bolt coming through our leg and I'm just gonna put this together temporarily to show you and now that half inch bolt comes through here as well and the wheel goes on to the 5 8 inch bolt. And now once this is all together, the wheel lifts up and we'll have a lock piece here at the end which will hold the wheel uh, below the frame when this is up and when it's down, we're flat on the ground. So that's how it's going to work. Okay, so now we're going to start to attach the caging to the frame. The caging that we're going to use is what's called half inch hardware cloth. So these little squares on this caging are only a half inch wide. And the reason we want to use this is, it, at least in our area, we have a lot of raccoons. And if you get chicken wire, raccoons are, can actually uh, tear that chicken wire open because it's not strong and the holes are pretty large. So this smaller uh, the smaller holes in this half inch hardware cloth keep the raccoons out and what we're going to use to attach this wire to the to the frame are what's called these poultry staples and you can get these at Home Depot it's basically just a nail that's sharpened on both ends and bent into a U shape so we'll just put that uh, through the, the netting and hammer it into the frame and this, this um, caging is, comes in a two foot wide roll, 25 feet long, which is why we built this frame to be 22 feet tall and about 25 feet around so that we can get one roll all the way around and not really have any wastage. So we're going to attach this now. except for on the back side where we're going to be putting some doors. And now I'm going to show you how to attach the wheels and the wheel lift. Okay, so first we're going to attach the wheel lift bar. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the wire around the hole that we drilled here in this uh, corner brace piece so I can get my bolt through. So I'm cutting on four sides here. and I got that piece out. Now I take my half inch bolt with my washer and stick it all the way through and put another washer 
on the other side. Now I'm going to attach two bolts. That's because we need a little bit of space for the wheel lift between uh, the frame and the wheel lift itself. So I'm putting two bolts onto here and I'm going to tighten these up really well too. Okay, so I got two uh, channel lock pliers and I'm going to open them up so I can grab these bolts and just tighten. Oh, wrong way. Okay, now I'm going to put my wheel lift through this uh, piece. I also, I already attached the the 5 8 inch bolt which is going to go through the wheel and one washer. Okay, so just like that, I already put that on. Now I'm going to slide this over the half inch bolt. And on the other side of the bolt, I'm going to attach a lock washer and nut. Okay, so the way this goes is first you have a regular washer, then you put your lock washer, and then you put your nut and the lock washer will prevent the um, nut from sliding off when we're actually moving the chicken tractor around. So I'm going to tighten this pretty good too. Not too much because we want to be able to have some flexibility with our wheel lift over here. So maybe a little bit more than that. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, now we're gonna put the wheel on to the wheel lift. So first I'm gonna put a washer, 5 8 inch washer. And now I'm gonna tighten on a nut. And this one again, we're gonna tighten it with the channel lock pliers. This one can be nice and tight because we don't need any rotation from this. Now I'm going to put another washer, 5 8 inch washer, and put my wheel. Now our wheel has an inside, so if you look at it straight on, you'll see that one side is jutting out, and that's the side we want uh, pointing in toward the, the tractor itself. And on the outside, now I'm going to put another um, lock washer to keep the wheel from sliding off. So again, washer, lock washer, and yeah. and this one. I don't want to again. Don't want to tighten too much because I want the wheel to be able to move. That's pretty good. And so now, when I lift this, I go up onto my wheel. Okay, so now we have to figure out where to put the bolts which are going to lock this wheel in place um, when, it, when we're moving it. So we lift the, the wheel lift up, and when it gets to a point where we feel like we'd be able to move the tractor around easily and the chickens would not run out, we're just going to take a pencil and mark here, make a mark where we're going to drill a hole and put this uh, another bolt in. We're using a uh, 3 8 inch bolt for this lock for the wheel lift. All right, now that the hole is there, I'm going to put the bolt in. Okay, then put a washer and a nut. And then we're just going to tighten that up with the wrenches. Okay, so now when the wheel 
lift comes down, this bolt holds it up. And when we go the other way, we're back on the ground. Simple as that. Okay, so now we're gonna set up the nesting boxes where the chickens are gonna lay their eggs in this area that's gonna be enclosed. Um, what we need here is a piece of plywood and we use some leftover from previous project that's four feet wide and one, one foot deep. And we also put a little notch in the corner there so that when this sets, we put a notch into both sides so that when this sets down into the frame, it's nice and flush. Now what I'm gonna do is take some screws which I've already placed in and just screw this into the frame and now this is set in and the next thing that we're going to do is we want to put a little lip on the edge of the nest box so that when we have straw in here the straw is not going to fall out Okay, so now I'm attaching that lip. I'm going to place it right here at the edge of the floor of the nest box. And I've already pre-drilled some holes in the plywood. So now I'm going to punch a screw through the hole in the plywood up into the 1x2. Alright, so that's fixed in now. Okay, so now that we have the floor on, we have to create the side walls for the nesting box. The chickens, you know, they like to be in a really tight, kind of dark, cramped space when they're laying their eggs. So we cut these pieces of plywood, they're 8 inches by 11 inches. So it fits nicely right into the little space here. I'm going to put a little bit of wood glue down where I'm going to, where, um, I'm going to put this piece on and I've also already drilled two holes into the bottom of this floor. So I'm going to stick the glue there. Justin, can you hold that there for me? And now I'm just going to screw in from the bottom just like we just did. And one more to get it in place. So now we have, we're going to have one nest box, a second nest box, a third nest box, and then we're going to use a, a square five gallon bucket like this to be our water tank right here and it will fit just underneath the roof. So now we'll move on to putting on the roosting bars where the chickens will sleep at night. For the roost bars of our coop, we're going to be using these branches that we cut down from a tree. Um, you can use lumber if you don't have something like this available, so a, a two by two is a good size and is strong enough to support the weight of the chickens. Um, so all we did here, we already pre-drilled some holes into each of these roost bars and I'm just going to eyeball the spacing here so that they're evenly spaced um, throughout the enclosed area here. Cool. When you're putting in your roost bars, you can calculate out about that every each chicken is gonna require about nine inches of space. So this is a four foot roost bar. It's gonna fit about five chickens and they'll have plenty of room in that much space. If you're in a colder climate, you can actually put a few more because they tend to huddle together anyways. Now we're going to put in the water tank right here. Um, so what we're the first thing we're going to need to do is drill a hole that will fit a three-quarter inch PVC pipe. So we're using a one and a half inch hole saw to drill a hole into this point here where the water tank will sit. To prepare the watering bucket, uh, which is going to be our tank for the nipples. What we'll need is a bucket and we've drilled a hole that's gonna fit three quarter inch PVC connections into it. 
So I have a, a male adapter here. So it's got a male three quarter inch with threading on one side. I've wrapped that threading with some of this Teflon tape. On the other side, it's a female with a slip connection. So no threading in that side. And the other piece I'm gonna use is a female uh, three quarter inch PVC threaded. And so what I'm gonna do is stick this female to male connector into the bucket and then on the other side screw on my female connector and you might need to use a wrench to get it nice and tight so I'm holding that on the inside and then Okay, so now that this is tightly in, just to make sure we have a watertight seal, I'm going to use some silicone caulk and just um, waterproof this. There's other ways to, um, to do this as well. If you know a better way, go ahead and do that, but this is just what, how we are doing it with the tools that we have. Okay, so now we are going to put our PVC pipe, which is going to have the chicken nipples connected to it, up into our water tank. So I'm using PVC glue, and I'm going to glue the outside of my pipe here. And I'm also going to glue the inside of my this elbow. And just put those two together and they'll set, the glue will set very fast, within a few seconds. And now I'm gonna glue the other side, which is gonna connect up into the tank, the water tank. All right, so now I'm putting the glue up, Oosh. and then I'm gonna connect this Now we're preparing the pipe that the chicken nipples are gonna go into. I drilled a 3 8 inch hole into um, the pipe in two places already, but the chicken nipple we're using is a little bit bigger than that. So I take the drill and once I turn it on, I'm gonna kind of swing it in a circular motion just to open the hole slightly. And that'll... And now I can screw this um, chicken nipple into that hole. Before I screw it in, I'm going to wrap it with some of the Teflon tape. And this will give it a nice, tight, uh, waterproof seal. So just a few rounds of the Teflon tape, and then I'm gonna screw this in all the way into this hole. And I'll repeat that for the second hole. Make sure when you're drilling the holes that they're both facing the same direction because the way that these chicken nipples work is that they have to be hanging straight down otherwise the water will just keep pouring out of them. So when you drill the holes make sure they're pointing the same direction. Alright and now that our nipples are on we're gonna attach a flush valve so if we ever need to empty the water tank out or we just want to flush everything out of the tank, we can easily open the tank out. We can open the tank up and let all the water come out. So I just got a little ball, three quarter inch ball valve here. And I'm again gonna apply some of the PVC glue. And again on the inside of this. Okay, and now we'll attach this piece to the one we already attached to the actual water tank and our water system's done. Okay, again, I'm putting glue on the end of my pipe. And I probably should have left a little bit more slack there for myself. And then glue on the inside of the pipe here. And now I'm just gonna press these together. and 
make sure that my nipples are pointing down. All right, and now we are going to be putting <coughs> on the walls around the, the roost and nest box space. So what we're using is fence boards. Um, when you go to the hardware store, these, you'll find these redwood and cedar fence boards, and they come in six foot lengths. So what we already did is we cut the fence boards into four foot pieces and two foot pieces, two foot pieces. And we'll just be first hammering on the four foot pieces along the walls like so. And then we'll be mending the two foot pieces together to make four foot pieces. And then mending those around the front and the back. So shouldn't take too long. And we're just gonna use hammer and nails to put these on. Um, if you want to, you can use some small screws. Now I'm gonna finish putting on the panels um, on the front of this enclosed area. What I did was I took a piece of scrap lumber I had and I attached it right here. I just put one screw right down through the top here. And then I put another screw in from the back into this piece of wood here. And what that allows me to do is now use the two foot that I had left over, the two foot pieces I had left over from cutting those fence boards to finish making this front. And that way I don't have to waste any lumber. So I'm gonna nail these on and finish this off. For the back side of the, the chicken coop, you have a few options. Um, we are, you definitely wanna put a door behind the nesting boxes so that you can access the eggs. We are actually going to be putting a door on this back side as well because we might be keeping quail in here and we want to be able to reach in and grab the quail eggs. Um, for chickens you could just close this off with with the same kind of wire mesh that we used on the other three sides. But I'm going to show you what how we're going to make the door right now. Um, I cut another three of these fence boards down to four feet and two feet. And what I'm gonna do right now is screw these two together to make a little door. I have some uh, scrap lumber that I cut off of a pallet and I'm gonna use this pallet wood to screw these two pieces together. As you can see here, I've laid out the pieces that I'm gonna be attaching to this back panel. Um, just as they're going to be going up there. So the, this piece right here is going to be fixed to the bottom of the frame. Then this piece is going to be the door that hinges open so we can reach inside and grab the quail eggs. Then the next piece is going to be fixed again and this door will lock into this and the top door which will be the egg door will hinge like so and we'll lock into the roof. So I'm gonna attach um, all of these and put the hinges on right now. I've fixed the bottom panel. Now I'm gonna attach this door with a little hinge. Um, when you're using the hinge, when you're attaching the hinges, there is two sides to that, that hinge. One where you'll see the, the metal is fixed all the way through to the hinge and the other side which is floating and the floating side is what you'll put on the door and the fixed side is what you'll put onto your fixed panel and just make sure you do that for both hinges so i'm just going to put this on right now just line it up so that the hinge bolt is centered along um, the point where it's going to actually swing down and then just go ahead and you know put Put just three screws in first, enough just to test it, and then finish it off with the rest of the screws. So here we are, it's all complete. This uh, top door, the egg door, opens up right there and we can access the eggs. And this is now gonna lock into the roof. So when we put the roof pot panel on, we're gonna drill a little hole into the roof panel so that we can lock that into there. And then this panel is fixed. This 
bolt opens up right here and we can reach in there and scoop out the quail eggs. And again, if you're just keeping chickens in here, then this can just be a wire mesh panel. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna close off these holes that we left um, around the top of the, the enclosed space. So we've gotten some, we have some leftover scrap of this uh, half inch hardware cloth and we just cut, we're cutting it into strips and using the uh, chicken staples, just like we did for the wire in the rest of the frame, we're going to attach this to close this area in. And having a gap like this on the top helps in the summer with ventilation, lets the, some of the hot air escape. And uh, it just worked out in terms of you know us having to not have to cut the lumber just to fit this exactly. the roof on next and so what we're using for the roof is this corrugated uh, plastic sheet. These come in 8 feet and 12 feet lengths at the hardware store. So we got a 12 foot length. We're, length. we're going to have a little bit of excess um, but what we're doing is we're going to cut this down to 40, uh, 54 inch lengths. That'll give us just a uh, about a 2 inch overlap in the back and a half inch overlap in the front. and. To cut it, all you need is a is a good saw. I use these. I use this uh, Japanese saw. It's called a bear saw, and it's got really fine teeth and it's super sharp. It's good for cutting something like this. So we're gonna cut it cut it up, and then we'll attach it to the top. Okay, so now we're going to attach the actual roof panels. You can see we set them onto the the roof area. So we have two panels that we cut to 40, uh, 54 inches and we set them so that they overlap um, just by one ridge of the corrugation. To actually s secure the panel in, what we're going to do is use a... First we're going to drill a hole into the corrugate panel. This is a 3 16th inch bit that we're going to use. We want to use the same, a bit that's the same size as the screw we're using. These are special screws that you'll find at the hardware store with the corrugate panels and they come with a little rubber washer um, attached to them. So we're going to drill a hole into the corrugate and then you're going to use your drill and most drills when you buy drill bits they'll come with the attachment like this where you can put different pieces into here and that this screw actually fits right into that piece. So you just take the bit out and, and that's what you use to screw this screw in. So I'm going to show you that whole process right now. Okay, so we're, first we're going to drill that hole only through the corrugate, not through the wood. Go ahead, Russ. So just like that, right through the corrugate. And then I'm taking my screw, putting it right into this bit here, and tightening into the wood. And don't over tighten just so that the washer, you can see the washer kind of splays out as the screw tightens down and it feels secure. And that's it. And we're just going to put a screw in every other um, valley in the corrugate. And we're going to put one in one row in the back, one row along our middle support beam of the roof, and one on the end support. Beam. put the door together, the big door for the top of the chicken tractor next. Um, what we've done is we're going to use some 2x2 two two lumber here. We've cut them already. We've cut a short, our short two pieces to 39 inches and we've cut our long two pieces to 44 and 3 quarter inch. And we're going to screw these together. We're going to screw the corners together and then we're going to use two pieces of fence board we're going to screw these down along the uh, the long side here and use that to just secure the thing together and we'll also attach the um, hardware cloth mesh to to these these uh, panels and when you're putting this together you want to make sure that you you know don't just go by the measurements I gave you 
check the measurements the inside of your the door frame that you're going to have because depending on you know how you screwed it together your measurements might be a little bit off you might be a quarter inch or a half inch off or you know, long or short so check inside and and check get your own measurements for this okay so here's our finished door we use the two by two frame and then put the fence boards on top and we attach the the chick the hardware cloth by hammering it from underneath with the chicken staples and now we're just going to attach this in so we've already placed the hinges onto the frame over here and we're just going to place this in we put little keychains here um, just so we could hold on to this while we're screwing it in but you can just put a you know tie a little rope in here or some twine before you actually place the door in you'll need some kind of stopper on this side of the tractor so that when the door comes down it doesn't fall in so I just used a little scrap piece of 1 by 2 I measured down 2 inches from the top of this board and I screwed it in there and so now when the door comes down it stops right here so now I'm just going to put the screws in to the hinge um, I'm using a 1 and 5 8 inch screw instead of the screws that actually came in with the hinge just so that this goes down into the frame of the wood and doesn't just attach this board on top. The last step of building your chicken tractor is to secure your door. And so to secure the door you want to choose some type of latch that is a little bit difficult to open uh, because raccoons are actually very dexterous and uh, they can open anything that you could open with one hand. So think of find a latch that needs two hands or requires some kind of carabiner to keep it shut and just attach it there and that's the last step. So now our chicken tractor is ready and we can roll our chickens wherever we like. So we're going to take this out to the farm now and get our chickens in. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. We really, you know, we really encourage everyone to bring some animals onto your garden or onto your farm. Having animals in your garden adds such a uh, another level of diversity, of beauty, of functionality to your garden. The chickens are such multifunctional animals and and you know they've been our companions as farmers and gardeners for thousands of years and they really you know they we need them just as much as they need us and they really help in terms of the health of the garden they just really take it to another level the manure that they provide is amazing as long as it's managed in the right way the eggs that they provide are delicious and healthy for us and you know just having them around you know having some some garden friends to come and visit on a daily basis and see their you know their funny little faces they're kind of like dinosaurs you know for those of you who haven't had chickens yet you see they have these weird crazy dinosaur legs and you know they look at you funny but they're, they're just really cute and, and great to have around so I hope this video has helped you I hope that you can uh, now build a chicken tractor at home you know this you don't have to build it to this exact size if you if you don't have the space for it you can adjust um, what we've shown you but as long as you get those basic principles down right move the tractor every day every other day let that manure be incorporated bring the chickens on to fresh grass fresh greens every day you're gonna have some really healthy chickens you're gonna have really healthy soil and you're gonna get to eat some really healthy delicious eggs so again thanks for watching Hi, thanks for watching this video. My name is Rishi Kumar and I'm a member of The Growing Club. The Growing Club is a group of individuals and small businesses in Los Angeles working together to create a more equitable and sustainable future. Every month, The Growing Club works to educate our members, our local community, and our global community on how to grow food sustainably, regenerate our urban and suburban ecosystems, and create supportive and strong communities. Every month we offer educational community events here in Los Angeles and produce 
free online learning materials available to anyone. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please consider joining the Growing Club. Your monthly contribution will help create more videos like this one available to anyone worldwide for free. To join, head to thegrowingclub.com and see how you can become part of our growing community. Thank you.